My name is Joe Bullard. I've spent the last 20 years researching Ed's Coral Castle in Homestead, Florida. After 20 years, I wrote the novel called Waiting for Agnes. It's inspired by the true story of Coral Castle. The mystery of Coral Castle begins when Ed was born in Riga, Latvia in 1887. Ed was sickly as a child, and his grandfather took this time to start training him as a stonemason. And when he was sick in his childhood, Ed never went out that much and played with other children. When he was 26 years old, he met a 16-year-old girl named Agnes Scuffs, and Ed had never dated that much, and he just fell madly in love with Agnes. She fell in love with him also. They were scheduled or engaged to be married in 1912, and Agnes never really gave him a good reason, but the night before the wedding, she just simply said, Ed, I can't marry you, and she jilted him at the altar. In 1912, Ed Leed Scowlin was engaged to Agnes Scuff, his fiance, in Latvia. She was 16 years old. He called her his sweet 16. The night before the wedding, Agnes jilted Ed. Broken hearted, he came to Florida to build Coral Castle. Today, we're gonna to explore the mysteries of Coral Castle. All of Ed's tools came from a junkyard, beginning with this bell here. Ed said, ring this bell twice and I'll give you a tour. If you ring it once, or you ring it three times, Ed wouldn't come out. If you take a tour of Coral Castle today, you'll see a stone down there that is taller than the stones at Stonehenge. Ed was saying with this stone, I know the secret of Stonehenge. And at the 30 ton stone that Ed put up there, he left a marker on top with a configuration of three stones. And if you look in the heart of the King's Chamber in the Great Pyramid, you'll see this exact configuration of stones. At Coral Castle, Ed Leeds Gallon cut and moved over 1,100 tons of solid coral. Ed used this, what he called his Stonehenge stone here, to prove that he understood the secret science behind Stonehenge. And if you'll notice the T-shaped stone on top of this stone, this stone is taller than many of the stones at Stonehenge. Ed used Coral Castle here to prove he understood a secret science that has long ago been forgotten. At 30 tons, this is the heaviest stone that Ed cut and lifted at Coral Castle. If you notice this configuration of stones on top here, Ed called this 30 ton stone his king stone, and he said the stones up top were the crown for the king. But if you look inside the king's chamber at the Great Pyramid, you'll find this same configuration of stones. What was Ed trying to say with this configuration of stones? It's only my opinion, but I believe that what he was saying was, if you look at the king's chamber and you look at my stone here, you'll see that I understood the secret of the Great Pyramid. Ed's greatest accomplishment at Coral Castle, and it's something that has scientists and engineers totally baffled today. If you go to Coral Castle in the east wall, Ed called this his nine-ton swinging gate. Ed took a stone. Now we're talking about jagged coral here. And you gotta remember one thing. This is, it's coral, but it's also called oolitic limestone because it's made up of little tiny corals that were formed thousands of years ago. It's very hard, but it's also brittle. You can tap this with a hammer and it will break. And yet, Ed was able to cut this stone and move it and never lost a piece of it. This nine-ton gate is perfectly balanced on the wheel bearings of a 1918 Ford truck. To do this, Ed had to find the center of gravity of the stone, and he had no tools. All his tools came from a junkyard. Now this stone is so perfectly balanced that it'll move with a gentle push. In 1986, the weight, nine tons of this stone, crushed the wheel bearings. So Coral Castle called the University of Florida. They sent down an engineering team to see if they could fix it. What happened was this. They called in a construction crew. They brought in a 50-ton crane. They lifted this nine-ton gate up. Well, when they did, at the bottom, they found that Ed had mounted this nine-ton stone on a smaller pie-shaped piece of stone. They could not understand how the pie-shaped piece of stone supported the nine tons. So they sent it to the geology department at the University of Florida. The University of Florida geology department studied the stone, sent it back to Coral Castle here in Homestead, Florida, and they said, hey, this is not a meteorite. 
but the, the origin of this stone cannot be determined. The materials are not of this earth. Well, many people were curious about, well, why is this man building this castle? And what he would tell the, the local people in Homestead or Florida City, he would say, well, he'd look out towards Latvia and he'd say, I'm building Coral Castle for my sweet 16. One day, she's gonna come across the water, the ocean there, and she's gonna marry me he, here at Coral Castle. And until she does, I'm waiting for Agnes. In Ripley, believe it or not, they call this the world's largest valentine. It weighs 5,000 pounds. Ed said man was forgetful by nature. And he said that if he forgot to get Agnes a Valentine's Day card, that when they sat down and had dinner every night at this table, she could look at this card and she'd always know she had one. Ed said he was a poor man and he didn't have enough money to provide Agnes with fresh flowers every day. And she loved fresh flowers. So Ed planted this exora bush in the center of the table so that Agnes would always have fresh flowers. This plant is over 50 years old and is still growing healthy today. I'm sitting here on one of Ed's lookout posts. Ed only worked from midnight till six in the morning so no one could catch him cutting and lifting the stones at Coral Castle. If you should try to sneak up on Ed outside in the dark, all this area around Homestead used to be woods. So Ed would be working in here, it might be three o'clock in the morning. What he would do is he'd step up on this stone here, sit up on the top of the stones, cross his arms and look out and say, how are y'all doing tonight? When you leave, I'll go back to work. It's verified no one ever caught Ed Lee Scalnan working at Coral Castle. That's why it's still a mystery today how he cut and moved the heavy stones. Now the story is that nobody could sneak up on Ed, but some children one time reported that they saw Ed floating these stones, these huge 10-ton stones across the, the, uh, the Coral Castle grounds there. He was floating them, the kids said, like hydrogen balloons. Ed invented this magnetic generator in 1918. He left the plans behind for how to build it. The government would never give him a patent on it. Does this magnetic generator hold the key to solving the world's energy problems? Another fascinating mystery at Ed's Coral Castle is his magnetic generator. Forgive me, I'm, I'm not a mechanic, so I'm going to have to explain this in, in the own crude terms that I have. Ed believed that everything in the world was made up of magnets and he said once you get the North and South Pole magnets chasing each other he said it will never stop unless you break the current and this idea falls in line with a lot of the trains the jet trains that are being the magnetic levitation trains that are being developed in Japan where they don't the train doesn't actually ride on the iron cable but it actually floats above it and this is the idea that Ed had. In December 1951 Ed hadn't been feeling very well. He had stopped eating, in fact. And one day, he put up a simple sign on the front door of Coral Castle that read, going to hospital. Ed got on his bicycle, he was weak, and he pedaled over to the local bus station in Homestead, Florida. And he bought a ticket, and he hopped a bus to Jackson Memorial in Miami. And he checked himself into the hospital there, and the doctors were um, a little bit amazed. They, they said, you know, you haven't been eating here, your body's weak. And they started trying to pump fluids in him and, 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 and get his strength back. But Ed lapsed into a coma. And um, after two days, he started to rally a little bit. But on the third day, he lapsed back into the coma and he died peacefully in his sleep in December 1951. Ed Lee Scalman was 64 years old, the genius the creator of Florida's Coral Castle, the eighth wonder of the world, was now gone.